Hello and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the Algebra 1 concept of quadratic domain and range. This is standard A.6a in the great state of Texas and we are using item number 12 off the Redesign Practice Online Start Test. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, unpause it, and we will look at our answers together. So we have part of quadratic function, f, that's graphed. We are looking for the domain. And let's just verify that that word domain is not going to be showing up anywhere here on our reference material. So we get a whole bunch of functions here and equations and formulas. But we're not going to get domain showing up anywhere. So unfortunately, we have to know what domain means before we even come into the start test. So let's open up our graph draw feature. Let's define domain real quick. And we'll also define range because those two are typically asked together and we could have been asked the, the range just as easily. So the domain is going to be the set of all possible independent variable values. Now for shorthand, we'll say those are going to be our x values. And so when we're looking for our domain, we are looking side to side on, along the x-axis. Now, this problem could have also asked us about the range, so let's just separate them. The range is going to be the set of all, if the domain is independent variable values, then our range is going to be the set of all dependent variable values. This is the same for quadratics. This is the same for linear functions. So thankfully, these terms don't change depending on which type of function we're dealing with. So that's going to be our vertical y-axis. Now, sometimes the range will change. Sometimes there'll be y. Sometimes the problem won't even have a y. I'll say f of x equals, and that f of x kind of stands in the place of that y, or g of x, or even h of x. And those are just the dependent variable values. So what we're looking for right here is our domain. So what do we know about our domain here? Well, when we're looking side to side, we see that we have a closed circle. You see that closed circle right there? All right, so what does that closed circle mean? When we see closed, that means we include the number. So we're going to say either less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, depending on which way it opens. Sometimes on problems like this, we'll see an open circle. So that means it doesn't include that number. So we're still going to do greater than or less than, but it's not going to have the equal sign. It's just going to say greater than or equal to. So we need to have a a function here. Our domain is going to say x is it's going to be an equal to. Look at the direction here. Okay, So the x is moving to the right. When it's moving to the right, it's going to be greater than. If it ever moves to the left, it's going to be less than, right? Because the numbers get greater or larger as you move to the right. So we can say that x, we're just looking at the x. I know it dips down a little bit here, but that doesn't really matter. We're looking at the x. And the x moving to the right, it's going to be greater than or equal to, and then we've got this, what is this x value right here? Negative 1. Okay, so that's how we would show it mathematically. Now, we need to translate that. And I'm going to move this and some of these lines. I'm going to look a little bit strange. We need to translate all of these values into symbols here. So all real numbers x is greater than or equal to negative 1. All right, a definitely is what we're looking for. Let's check, make sure b, c, and d are wrong. All real numbers greater than or equal to 1. So this is greater than or equal to positive 1. Nope, that's not what we're looking for. This is all real numbers, so this is going to be, uh, looks like this, the infinities. So our answer is going to be a.